In this video we will talk about two important concepts and natural things that we will need and will face in the networking. The first one is if I have like three switches and in order to maintain full redundancy and by redundancy what I mean is that this switch one this is switch two and this one is switch 3 if I wanted to connect them connect them all together I can do this move and that should be enough because this end device can communicate with this one and this one also this device using this switch can reach and communicate with this one so this is a network all of them are talking together and we have no problem but the concept of redundancy, I mean, I'm sorry, is that just in case for any reason this cable ha went faulty or had a problem, then that's it. Switch number three is dead alongside with its devices. No one can reach switch three and it can reach anyone and can inform anyone that it has a problem. So as a matter of redundancy, let me grab and extend this cable in here. So in, by default, I will have this topology where we can all talk this way in case this cable went down, no problem. Switch 3 still can go using this cable to reach these two, can go this way to reach switch 1, we have no problem. If this one went down and this one was already working properly, then this is the same original scenario. If these two were working properly and this one went down, no problem. So this triangle shape, this triangle topology makes me have a full redundancy for any one of them that I want. And at the same time, whatever single cable got failed, then no problem. This will not affect my network and will not cause outage. So this is beautiful. Okay, I have now redundancy, no problem. The big problem we have talked about in the VLAN lecture in the concept of switching, I believe, was that the normal and default behavior that you cannot manipulate or change in switching or in switches is that whenever a switch, for any reason, received a broadcast message through some interface it will automatically at the same time forward this broadcast, mes broadcast message to all its other interfaces but not the interface that the message came from so this switch for any reason received a broadcast message maybe from here from this interface at the same time it will forward it to these two interfaces this broadcast message will go now to switch one through this interface. What will switch one do? It will send it automatically to switch three. For this broadcast message that came from switch one, switch two, I'm sorry, this one, this broadcast message normally will go to switch three through this interface. And this one, through this interface what will the switch do it will take this message that came from this interface and forward it to this interface and it will take that broadcast message that came from this interface and forward it to that interface that makes switch one receives a broadcast message through this interface which will automatically send it to switch two and this interface sends a broadcast message to switch to through this interface from this interface to this one to reach this to make this message reach switch two. Now switch two also just like switch three received two broadcast messages, one from switch one, the other from switch three. What it will do? It will forward this again to switch three, and it will take this one that received from here and forward it back to switch one. This thing 
will continue to be happening forever or until the resources utilization gets full and cause the switches to crash because as I said before the broadcast message are heavy messages that do consume a lot of utilization of the resources whether it was CPU or RAM okay so all this scenario all what's happening here from un being unable to control and stop the broadcast message is called a broadcast storm this was a storm and another term and when you work in the future or when you are or you are, or I'm sorry you are already working in networking you will call it a loop some other environments will call it a layer 2 loop because it happened because of the normal or default switch behavior okay so it will be called a layer 2 loop so all of this happened all of this disaster and storm happened just because I wanted to maintain redundancy just because I extended this extra cable okay in the old scenario first when we had this topology and the computer or any device sends a broadcast message to this interface what will happen that this broadcast message will be forwarded to this interface after that it will be forwarded to this interface after that it might be forwarded to this interface and that's it this will not be forwarded to another switch so that this switch default behavior will re-forward it again to its other interface so in this topology there is no loop loop I'm sorry in whatever topology you will face in the future whether it was two three four maybe 100 device switches I don't care about the number of the devices once you reach a ring topology once you close your ring just like what happened in here when you have closed the ring now you have closed area inside whether this area was part triangle square or even a circle a pentagon pentagonal or hexa whatever okay so once you close your ring then you are suspected to receive a loop at a chance of 99 percent you will have broadcast storm at this percentage and you will have okay this will always happens just because you wanted to maintain redundancy just because you have closed your ring this makes redundancy is a failure this makes ring topologies are failure this makes all of this networking terms and technologies useless okay so at that time a new technology came it's a real mess okay a new te te technology came was called the spanning tree protocol the STP now the spanning tree will automatically you know, must know that spanning tree all it will what will we talk about spanning tree in our CCNA is just talking and verifying we will not configure spanning tree because it's completely automatic right now in about maybe 99% of whatever switch that you will buy from the market spanning tree is already enabled will already behave once you I'm sorry once you extend the third link all the devices will detect automatically and negotiate between them that a loop might happen so please enable spanning tree automatically do the spanning tree process that we will talk about right in, in the right now in the next okay in detailed and no loop will happen at all okay so what does spanning tree spanning tree do I'm sorry what does spanning tree do spanning tree do or solve or disable what we have previously enabled which is you remember that we had only two connections between switch one two and three and everything was normal once the third interface was extended we had a big problem 
which is loop so spanning tree will automatically what it will do it will temporarily disable the new or the third not the new the third extended cable okay this will cause us to logically go back to the first topology this will make us looks this way behave this way okay physically we do look like we have three cables three connections spanning tree makes our network looks this way and behaves this way okay like this one do not exist why because it disables one of these two ports and when one of these two ports is disabled this is like this cable is useless this cable is not working so we have no problem we have solved the broadcast storm problem okay all of the process of spanning trees automatic just like the process of the default VLAN that makes your switch have 24 interface all of them behave in the same broadcast domain lies in the same broadcast domain so whenever you just join a device to your switch it will operate normally and it will join the network okay so just like vlans are by by default enabled in switches just like the interfaces of the switches all are up and running and have a power supplied by default when you take the switch out out of the box also spanning tree is by default enabled once you operate a switch out of the box okay you need to do nothing about this okay you can disable it you can manipulate it you are not asked or you or you mustn't know how to do this as a ccna engineer but all we, what we are talking about is you know you should know how do the spanning tree behave and what is the spanning tree process and how to verify that spanning tree is working and which one is the ruler in the spanning tree topology okay so in spanning tree what it will do with that it will disable one of these two interfaces to solve the problem okay what what problem i mean problem what problem the problem of this triangle topology imagine another type of topologies where i have this switch this other switch okay i have one fast ethernet interface which gives me a bandwidth of 100 megabit per second okay for transmission and i just wanted to extend another one to make this two interfaces maybe make it have a bandwidth of 200 because 100 is no longer enough okay what will happen if a broadcast domain i'm sorry a broadcast message entered from this interface it will be sent maybe throughout this interface to this switch and this switch will receive it from this interface automatically will re-forward it again to this switch through this interface once switch one received it receive it through this interface it will retransmit it and re-forward it i'm sorry to this interface to this one and this will continue to happen forever and this is also called the broadcast storm or the loop okay so even in these two switches between these two switches there will be a loop because more than a single interface is connected so one of them must be disabled using spanning tree one of them must be disabled using spanning tree maybe i have four switches no matter how many we will see this in the pack tracer one of them will be disabled for a reason and we will discuss what which reason is that why this specific interface is being disabled okay so this is the only concept of spanning tree of why the spanning tree were invented okay we need redundancy there will be a broadcast message after the broadcast message there will be a broadcast storm or a loop so a spanning tree will requires an election to perform first election of what okay you want to know when you enable spanning tree or it's already enabled by default which interface will be disabled actually this will not be your concern in spanning tree your concern in spanning tree is that which interfaces will stay on and operating so once i eliminate all the interfaces that i need the rest interfaces will get disabled because not just a single interface will be disabled why let me tell you what if we had two cables extended between each of these okay so two cables between switch one and two 
two cables between switch two and three, two cables between switch three and four. Okay, and there was a broadcast message forwarded from here to this one, so it will be immediately forwarded back to switch one and to switch three through these two interfaces because this is the broadcast behavior. When it reaches this interface through th this switch, I'm sorry, through this interface, it will be forwarded to these two. When switch one receives it, it from this interfaces, these two interfaces, it will forward this one to this, this one to this one, and both of them through these two interfaces. So this is not just a storm, this is a catastrophe. Okay, this is not just a storm, just because we have two cables extended between two of them. So to solve this, we need to disable more than a single interface. Why not just one in single interface? Because maybe this red cable was disabled, but we still have a closed topology, okay? There is a closed triangle because of these blue cables. So two cables in this state will might need to be closed, okay? When closing these two or disabling these two interfaces, is the problem solved? No, because if you remember the scenario of the two switches having two cables, okay, what happened is that this switch and this switch right now have two cables between them. So there is also a loop in here. So disable this one maybe, okay. These two switches, switches I'm sorry, still have these two cables between them. There is also a broadcast storm might happen in here. So please maybe disable this one. This leads us to one, two, three, four disabled ports just because we extended extra cables okay so i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve i have twelve port four of them are disabled only eight left because of spanning tree because the concept of entirely and completely eliminate the probability of a broadcast storm of a or, or layer two loop okay so your request, your concern will will be to know which ports will stay up, will, which ports will stay up and running, okay? So, to know that, election must be first performed, okay? To perform election, take this away, okay? This will be about 18 minutes, so let's take the election to the second video. Okay, how this was clear enough. In case only the concept wasn't clear enough, please comment down in the video. Subscribe, follow our channel, comment in the video that if you have any concern about the spanning tree concept. In the next video, we will start with the election process. Okay, so thank you for watching.